I'm Jetmarak and welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna be doing my January wrap up even though today is February 28th so I'm a little bit late but it's okay it's better late than never. In the month of January I read six books but most of them were for class which means that I don't really want to talk about them because boring. So today I'm going to be telling you about the books that I read by choice, which were not many, but they were all really great, so I'm really excited to tell you about them, so let's get started. The first book I read in January was A Week to be Wicked by Tessa Dare. I was in the mood for some historical romance. Somebody I follow on Twitter read this book. She said that it had a fake relationship trope and I just had to pick it up because that is probably one of my favorite tropes. I am so glad that I did because this was so much fun. I enjoyed it so much. I give it a 5 out of 5 stars. First, we are following Minerva, who's a geologist, which is awesome because that's something that I never see in books at all so I love that right off the bat. She sort of reminds me of Belle from Beauty and the Beast because she likes to read books and everyone in her town thinks she's weird and all she wants is to make a difference in the world of geology and I love that about her. Then we have Colin who has a bit of a bad boy reputation but he's a good guy inside I promise. I love their interactions. He has what I would say is PTSD because something traumatic happened to him when he was a child and now he suffers from nightmares and he can't be in certain places. The two of them end up going on this week-long trip to Scotland and it is a wild ride. Everything that could go wrong goes wrong and it was so much fun reading about them trying to maneuver their way out of these horrible situations. It was so funny. I love the banter. There is such good banter in this book. I love 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 loved it <laughs> like i said there's a fake relationship trope because you know an unmarried woman traveling with an unmarried man in the 1800s is not acceptable they end up saying that they're gonna elope and they tell so many other lies and so if anyone is looking to read a historical romance novel i definitely recommend this one like i said i give it a five out of five stars it was it was beautiful Next book I read was City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. This is the first book of the Mortal Instruments series. This was on my TBR a while ago, but I didn't get to read it until now. First of all, I'm gonna say that I am already a fan of Cassie Clare. I love the Shadow Hunters, so going into this, I'm already really in love. I read The Infernal Devices and I love, 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 love that trilogy. It's probably one of my favorites. Um, I'm wearing my TID necklace right now. Just being back in this world of Shadowhunters was amazing, despite of the fact that we're in a different era following different characters and it was a bit odd at first, but once I got into the plot, I was just like, yes. I'm so into this. But because I already know what Cassandra Clare is capable of and because I know that she can be so amazing and that her writing can be so fantastic, I can definitely say that this is not her best work ever. I also understand that this is her debut novel, so of course her writing is better now. Mortal Instruments is a pretty big and like famous series, but just in case you don't know anything about it, we are following Clary Frey. She lives with her mother Jocelyn in New York City and you know she's a regular human girl except that it turns out that her mother is a shadow hunter and she ends up being kidnapped by some demons and now Clary must face this whole new life and whole new world that she knew nothing of before full of shadow hunters, demons, vampires and werewolves and she must rescue her mother. This was so much fun to read. I do enjoy Cassandra Clare's writing even though it was a bit dull at times and definitely reads like an introduction novel we're being introduced to the characters to the villain and i can definitely see that there's a plot being built up and i'm very excited for it i don't love any of the characters just yet i definitely have some problems with some of them with Clary, she's a bit annoying and mean and rude at times. She owns up to it sometimes, she apologizes and I really appreciate that about her. This reminds me of Will just because he's sarcastic and funny and I mean, I find him funny. Um, but he definitely has this facade of arrogancy and overconfidence and I feel like deep inside he's just hurt and broken. He never shows his emotions and that makes him a little bit mysterious which makes me a little bit more interested because I want to know what's going on in his head. And again just props to Cassandra Clare for making characters that are complex and human with characteristics that I can say hey I like that and then other times when I'm like 
no. Other than that, I love being in this world. Uh, I give this book a 4 out of 5 stars. I, I'm, I'm just so excited to continue. I'm so excited to read all the Shadowhunter Chronicles. I love Cassandra Clare. I love this world. And although I am not enjoying it as much as TAD just yet, I know that it's gonna get better as it goes on. So I'm very excited for it. <sighs> I had to stop filming because my memory card got full. And then I noticed that there's a freaking water bottle here. Be gone. <laughs> so the next book I have for you guys is Home Going by Ya Yasi. I read this book for one of my classes, but I loved it so much that I really wanted to talk about it on my channel. I give it a five out of five stars. It was such a beautiful story. We're following sisters, one named Essie and the other one named Effia. They're from villages in Ghana. And the really cool thing about this book is that we're following their lineage and their descendants. So one of the sisters ends up marrying a British soldier and so her family ends up in Africa and the other sister ends up being sold into slavery and her family ends up in America. We get 300 years of history in this book and I find that to be so amazing. We follow all of these characters as they go through wars and slavery and so many other things. This well-written, so well-written novel with such beautiful descriptions and symbolism and i just love the fact that we get so much history within it it starts off in the 1700s and it goes on from there so to give you guys a better explanation the first chapter we follow essie the next chapter we follow effia or maybe it's the other way around <laughs> one of those um and then the next chapter we follow Essie's child, and then Effia's child, and then that person's child, and so on and so forth. I absolutely recommend this novel. Like I said, I give it a 5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. It's probably one of the my most favorite books that I've read in one of my classes so far. It's just rich in history and culture, and it's just amazing. So please read it. It is so good. Other than that, that is it for this video. Like I said, I did read other books. Uh, they were for class and like I said, I um, don't want to talk about them. <laughs> but if you're really interested to know what I read, you can check out my Goodreads and do make sure to follow me on my other social media. Don't forget to get to... Uh, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel. I will see you guys later. I hope you enjoyed this video and goodbye. Thank you.